This is my year of authority. Oh God, oh God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn quickly to Hebrews chapter number one. And man, and we're going to begin to move expeditiously. We don't have a lot of time, but we got some word for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have it, signify by saying amen. Amen. And those of you that don't have it, look on the screen. Amen. 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 God, who at sundry times and in divers manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us mm -hmm, by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. But by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a excellent name than they. Amen? And so also, Revelation chapter number 12, verse number 11. Mm -hmm. And they overcame him, that is the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, they love not their lives unto the death. Amen? Amen. And so with that being said, one thing about this year, this year, we're in consecration, but we're also dealing with the divine number. It's a number that ushers in a sense of authority and a sense of resoluteness that challenges us now to know who we are in God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't based on our intellect. It ain't based on our ability, even in our areas of prayer. Uh huh. And, and all of these things, you got to watch it when you find yourself so self-righteous on the basis of knowing that you put prayer in and you fasted and you brought your flesh up under subjection but then in, internally you're thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to. <laughs> And so you find yourself looking down your nose at other people. But the challenge here today is to at least bring some clarity. He says, uh, uh, God, in Hebrews chapter 1, God who in sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets. You'll notice that every king, all of the kings all throughout history, uh, they when they were put in position and they were given authority over the tribes, there was one thing that made uh, uh, the office resolute and it was the fact that they always had a prophet they had somebody that would speak to them on God's behalf yeah, yeah, yeah. and so what you gotta understand in this hour we still need to hear the prophet I'm talking now he lets us know in this same word here that God is now hath now in these last days spoken unto us by his son Jesus come on now if you wanna talk about a prophet you got people coming on TV talking about master prophets. But listen to me and listen to me good. If you get anything tonight, make sure that you walk away from here with an understanding of knowing that it is the word of God that is the best prophet that you could ever deal with. He'll tell you about you, your past and your present and your future. All you got to do is get in it, get connected to it, and understand that this is the authority of God. It's when you take the word of God and understand understand that he spoke in divers manners. He spoke in many different ways. And watch this here. Now, in 2012, 20, 12, 20 is the number of redemption and 12 is the number of authority of government. And so God now is shifting us and sending us into a place of authority where we understand that our revelation did not just simply usher us, but it uh, uh, positioned us and postured us to not now understand that when you read Revelation chapter 12, he's testifying, he's prophesying concerning us and how we won. How did we win? It's amazing to me. He's already predicted to us. He's already spoken and said that we got the victory. He's already said that we overcame by simply opening our mouth. Yes. Hallelujah. And so 
if you're going to be in authority, then you've got to be authorized to rise. In other words, you got to say in your own mind. When pastor was preaching last night out of the fifth chapter of Luke, he was dealing with the woman that pressed through the crowd 12 long years, but she was authorized. She knew that she had authority, that if she just said it in her mind, her faith, her faith made her put a demand on Jesus. Her faith. And so now you got to understand that all she did was have an authorized interruption. <laughs> Didn't the story start out with Jay Iris? That's right. It started out with Jay Iris saying that he had a daughter that was sick. Only to find himself going to his house, heading there. And while he's heading there, somebody reaches through the crowd and touches Jesus. And Jesus said, who touched me? Uh -huh, it was somebody that had that divine touch. Somebody that had, oh God, the touch of 12. I don't know about nobody else, but imagine having the 12 touch, the, 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 the touch that no matter what everybody else said, it don't make no difference. Jesus got to say, holy, somebody just pull something out of me. <laughs> who was it that touched me? And then the disciples have to respond and say, Lord, the whole crowd is strong in you. Everybody's been touched. No, 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 but this is a different kind of touch. Something about knowing that he spoke in diverse manners. Listen to how it said, how the Amplified Bible. It says in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth and in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers and by the prophets. And so God has a way of getting a word to you. He has a way of getting you out of a, a rut or a place of stuckness and cause you to then understand that you've been authorized. And ain't it amazing how that woman, uh, according to the law, it was illegal for her to even be in public. But uh, the rules had been suspended. When her faith kicked in, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you got to understand that if your faith ever kicks in, no matter what the rules are, you can step outside of whatever the rules are and operate in your faith. Yeah, yeah. And so God spoke in diverse manners and in many parts in many ways. Uh, you'll find that God has spoken to some of us by way of dream. He's spoken to some of us by way of vision. He's spoken to some of us by the angel of the Lord. When you read Revelation chapter 12, there's an angel that has now been announced to make uh, declarations to let us know what to anticipate next. You find John in a position of saying to us, what our future looks like. Uh -huh. the re Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor the reason why you're in such a fight. The reason why you're in such a fight is because your future is so bright. Your future is so bright. That's what the fight is about. That's what it's about. He wants to take the authority that God has given you. He wants to strip you of it. He wants to strip you of your identity. But in consecration, in the sixth day, can you imagine? Six. Sex, sex, the sex day. They call it the day of man. But at the same time, I found out that five prayers has gone up on each of these six days. And by the time the sixth prayer is, the fifth prayer is prayed tonight, it'll be the number 30. It's the number of divine maturation. It's the number of maturity. It means now that the church is shifting now. It can hit another gear. It can move from the place of complacency. It can shift it now into the divine perfected order in which God has ordained for us. Come on, tell somebody glory. glory. 
And so you'll find that in this word, he not only says this, but listen to verse 2. But in these last days, he has spoken to us in the person of his son, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, also by and through whom he created the worlds and reaches of space and ages of time. He made, produced, built, operated, and arranged them in order. He put them in order. Right. He didn't let stuff just be set up just any kind of way. But he's a God of order. Uh -huh. And so when you deal with authority and you deal with the hierarchy, you're going to always know that God has put us in a position to understand what our authority really means. Imagine having power and not realizing the power that you have. Okay, I'll cite an example for you in the scriptures. James, John, and uh, one other uh, uh, brother was with Jesus when they went into a city. And uh, they said, Master, uh, they won't give us nowhere to sleep. They said, Master, shall we call down fire from heaven and burn up the city? They understood that they had power. Look at your neighbor and say, that's power that's realized. See, once you realize you got power, if you've been with Jesus long enough, you'll know that you got the same kind of authority in which Elisha operated in. They knew that they could call down fire and change the whole city. Amen. But Jesus has to rebuke them and tell them what spirit be ye of. Uh, this is not me. Uh, we came here to save the city, not to set the city on fire and destroy people. And so now, in our time of pocket backing out of this, it's time for us to go. But remember this tonight, if you remember nothing else. God spoke. In divers' manners, he prophesied to us. He spoke to us in Revelation 12 and 11. And how have you now known that you're overcomers? You're overcomers by what you say. And you're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Come on, put your hands together.